By the authority given in the statutes of the Open University, I declare this congregation open for the conferment of degrees and the presentation of graduates. Distinguished guests, graduates and friends of the university, it's my privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to the 13th of the Open University's degree ceremonies being held in 2015. We're delighted to welcome Councillor Alison Thompson, Deputy Mayor of Gateshead, who's found time in her busy diary to be with us today. It's also my great pleasure to welcome our honorary graduands, Professor, Professor Sugata Mitra and Catherine Tikel. We're delighted to be able to honour you today. Each year, the Open University awards over 14,000 degrees. Throughout 2015, more than 8,000 of our graduates are being presented for their qualifications at degree ceremonies like this one today in Gateshead. These are being held in 10 different towns and cities throughout England, and also in Belfast, Cardiff, Edinburgh, and Dublin. This illustrates the extraordinary scale and reach of the Open University. It goes without saying that today is a very important occasion in the life of you, our graduates, your families and loved ones, as well as the university staff, who I hope you'll feel have nurtured and supported you. You could be forgiven for feeling that the occasion is so important that it needs to be solemn, but you'd be quite wrong. In every sense, this is an afternoon of celebration. So we'll be very disappointed if anyone crosses the stage today to anything less than thunderous applause or whatever other way you may feel you want to express your enthusiasm and support. With that in mind, why don't all of today's graduates please stand? Friends, families and OU staff, let's start today's ceremony by giving all of our amazing graduates a huge round of applause. Today's ceremony will begin with the presentation of the honorary degree of Doctor of the University to Professor Sugata Mitra, Professor Mary Kellett, Dean and Director of Studies in the Faculty of Education and Language Studies, will present Professor Mitra, who will sign the honorary graduates book and make a reply. Following this, we'll see the presentation of graduates who've gained a higher degree and who've been able to attend here today. They'll be presented by Ms. Deborah Fowler, Assistant Director, Student Services. We'll then see the awarding of the honorary degree of Master of the University to Catherine Tickell, Dr. Richard Brown, Dean and Director of Studies in the Faculty of Arts, will, pre will present Ms. Tickell, who will sign the honorary graduates book and make her reply. Then we'll continue our, with our presentation of graduates with those who've gained their first degrees. And to conclude the ceremony, I'll give a personal address to the graduates. So I now call upon Professor Kellett to present Professor Sigata Mitra. Vice-Chancellor, colleagues, graduates, guests. Professor Sugata Mitra is a scientist and educator whose discoveries, both technological and pedagogical, have transformed the lives of thousands of people in the world. His career has spanned many scientific fields, from computing to physics, from biology to energy storage, and from psychology to medicine. He is currently Professor of Educational Technology at Newcastle University. He is credited with more than 25 inventions and his achievements have included 
redesigning zinc chloride batteries, creating the yellow pages industry in India and Pakistan, and offering insights into Alzheimer's disease. But he is perhaps best known for the hole in the wall experiments. In 1999, he made a hole in the wall that separated his employer, the global software company NIIT, from the neighboring slum in New Delhi. In this hole, he placed a computer. The local children had never seen anything like this before. They were curious and excited. Soon, with no experience, no instructions, and no training, they had learned how to use it. Professor Mitra was encouraged by this finding. It suggested that with little more than access and motivation, children were able to pick up basic computing skills, and further tests suggested they were not just developing computer literacy, they were improving their skills and science, picking up English, developing problem-solving skills, becoming adept at sorting information, and forming reasoned opinions. In clusters across India, there are now holes in the walls that have benefited hundreds of thousands of children. The concept sparked one writer to consider what happens when knowledge is freely and democratically available. The result was the story of Slumdog Millionaire. Professor Mitra is on record as saying he wished it was called Slumdog Nobel Laureate. That is what he wants young people to aim for. But what is truly radical about this research was not just what the students were learning, it was how they were learning. That is, largely unsupervised. As a result, Professor Mitra developed the concept of minimally invasive education. This uses technology to transform teaching by raising aspirations and supporting independent learning in what he has termed a self-organized learning environment. Through virtual learning, the brightest minds can access the best teachers, thus leveling the playing field. Pushing this even further, Professor Mitra came up with the idea of the school in the cloud. This supplements what goes on in the traditional classroom with independent online investigations and peer collaboration. It is supported not only by teachers, but also by a network of Skype grannies who offer support, encouragement, praise, and the motivation to keep trying. This is challenging every principle of the education system as we know it, from the curriculum to pedagogy to assessment. There has been so much interest in this concept that in 2013, TED, the non-profit organization devoted to spreading ideas, awarded Professor Mitra a million dollar prize to develop the idea, just one of a number of awards and honors he has received from global organizations. There are many crossovers between Professor Mitra's work and the Open University's mission, particularly our commitment to bring education to those who could not otherwise access it, and our belief in the power of technology to revolutionize education. The OU also has interests in some of the most deprived regions of India, where we are working to raise the quality of primary education for millions of young children. With so much in common, it is entirely fitting that we honor Professor Mitra's outstanding contributions in this field and look forward to seeing what the school in the cloud might teach us next. Pro Vice Chancellor, by the authority of Senate, I present to you for the honorary degree of Doctor of the University, Sugata Mitra.
Thank you, sir, for this honor. It's um, a, a great honor for me uh, for two very specific reasons. The first, that I am getting this honor from the Open University. The Open University is the world's first and arguably the world's best change maker in university education. Back in the late 60s, it is they who showed us that the traditional structure of our thousand-year-old universities may indeed have an alternative, and that that alternative may also be imperative. I'm honored to receive this degree from such an organization. The second reason why I'm very happy to receive this degree is because of where I'm receiving it. This is Gateshead. Nine years ago, I came here with the initial results of my experiments in India. And here, in a school just a few miles away from here, um, we developed those research results into self-organized learning environments. The idea went viral all across the world. Tens of thousands of teachers started to report that they had carried out these souls, self-organized learning environment experiments, and they had gotten the exactly predicted results. I did these experiments here in Gateshead with a small group of children from the region and then spread it through the country. I gratefully received this degree on behalf of those thousands of children. It is to them that this degree should go, from the banks of the Ganges to the banks of the Tyne. I will be the keeper of their PhD. Thank you. Vice-Chancellor, I shall now present graduates who have gained higher degrees and have been able to attend here today. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, I present to you for a thesis entitled Elusive Translation, Film and Video in the Work of Isaac Julian, Zineb Zadira and Elia Syed, Kevin Parker. entitled Barriers to Secure ICT in a Maritime Environment, John Wood. For the degree of Doctor of Education, I present to you for a thesis entitled Implementing Peer Assessment in the Classroom, a Case Study, Gemma Sharp. I present to you for the degree of Master of Arts in Childhood and Youth, Diego Melo.
For the degree of Master of Arts in Education with distinction, I present Vicky Tate. For the degree of Master of Arts in Education, I present Anita Cooper. Ian Mackay. For the degree of Master of Arts in English, I present Charlotte Callow. For the degree of Master of Arts in History, I present Jacqueline Watson. For the degree of Master of Arts in Philosophy, I present Jill Sharp. For the degree of Master of Arts in Religious Studies, I present Peter McCarthy. For the degree of Master of Business Administration, I present Moira Angel. For the degree of Master of Education, I present Laura Davidson. <laughs> Jill Haxby Nicholson. Andrew Musson. <laughs> Gillian Parker. For the degree of Master of Engineering, I present Michael Dodds. <laughs> Alan Pearson. For 
the degree of Master of Science in Mathematics, I present Gary Langridge. For the degree of Master of Science in Medical Physics, I present Steve Perlish. For the degree of Master of Science in Psychological Research Methods, I present Jackie Schuller. And for the degree of Master of Science in Technology Management, I present Sean McGee. Hello everyone. <coughs> Sorry. Hello everyone. Pro Vice Chancellor, colleagues, graduates, guests. Catherine Tickell is the world's foremost exponent of the Northumbrian small pipes. She has popularised a genre and an instrument through her innovative compositions and performance, bringing the soundscape of Northumbria to global audiences. Born in 1967 in North Tyne Valley. Catherine's first interest in music was inspired by her father, Mike, who was heavily involved in the local traditional music scene and by the music of an older generation of traditional musicians from the local area. She began playing at the age of nine and by the age of 13, she had won all the small pipes competitions. She was also making a name for herself as an accomplished player of Shetland fiddle style, having attended Tom Anderson's classes at the University of Stirling's traditional folk summer school. At the age of 16, she released her first album on Kielderside, and in the same year, she was named the official piper for the Lord Mayor of Newcastle upon Tyne. Since then, she has released 14 of her own albums, which have further cemented the place of English folk music, particularly from the Northeast, as an ongoing artistic tradition. Her talents led her to record and perform with a range of important musicians, including local superstar Sting, Irish group The Chieftains, the great English folk singer June Tabor, and classical musician Evelyn Glennie. The Nash Ensemble also invited her to perform with them to celebrate the 75th birthday of Sir Peter Maxwell Davis, who has dedicated one of his compositions to her. Catherine has always taken a collaborative approach to music, and she likes to feel that she's helping to keep alive the spirit of openness and partnership that is inherent in folk music. The concept of legacy and the importance of passing on the Northeast musical heritage to future generations are fundamental to her work. Catherine firmly believes in the democratizing power of traditional music and how such music can evoke a sense of place and community to all who play and listen to it. She has made folk music more widely accessible in numerous ways. She established the Young Musicians Fund in 1997, which is managed by the Community Foundation. To date, this has raised almost £100,000 to help young people in the Northeast to realise their musical potential. In 2009, she received the Queen's Medal for Music, 
awarded to artists who have made an exceptional contribution to British music. For four years, she was artistic director of Folkworks, the folk development agency for the northeast of England, and provided artistic leadership and inspiration for the Folkworks programme. She was also the founding director of Folkestra, the Northeast Dynamic Young Folk Ensemble. Catherine is one of the core teaching staff on the Newcastle University degree course in folk and traditional music, which is actually also the first of its kind in England. In 2013, she won the prestigious Musician of the Year Award in BBC Radio 2's Folk Awards for the second time in fitting recognition of her achievements. And she told me that this morning she's just discovered that she's got an OBE. So, well done again. <laughs> Today, we are very proud to honour how Catherine has shared and celebrated the life and work of the ordinary people of Northumbria through her music. Pro Vice Chancellor, by the authority of Senate, I present to you for the honorary degree of Master of the University, Catherine Tickell. It's a real pleasure to be here and I can't hope to compete with the, the moving and eloquent words of Professor Mitra there, but I just would like to say how much this, this means to me. Probably more so because I didn't, I didn't go to university myself. I left school and embarked on a the beginnings of a career traipsing the length and breadth of Britain, playing the Northumbrian pipes, much against the advice of my school careers teacher, <laughs> who told me that that sort of thing could only ever be a hobby and not a career. I've since found out that he said something very similar uh, a few years later to Alan Shearer, who was at the same school. <laughs> so, so maybe it's just as well that neither of us listened to him. But, I think it, my parents would have liked it if I'd gone to university, if I'd got a degree, because both of those, both of them left school in their teens, they didn't stay on, they didn't do A-levels, and then they went back and struggled and worked really hard to get degrees and to get the qualifications that they needed to go on and do the jobs that they wanted to do. And actually, my mum did an open university degree, and I remember just exactly how much that meant to her. And sadly for me, when I was 18, I kind of thought I'd done school, I'd done learning, I'd had enough of that. And I, to be honest, if I had gone to university, I wouldn't have made the most of it. Um, and as I say, I, I thought learning was just something that you did at that point in your life and then you got on with your, the rest of your life and settled down. And yet, throughout the 30 years of my career since then, I've realised more and more how important learning is and how, how much I've been learning. My whole musical life has been about learning, about continuing to learn, about pushing myself, challenging myself and and continue, I hope I always continue to learn. And I've also discovered, which would have been a bit of a shock to my 18 year old self, I've also discovered that I really love learning. And interestingly, there's always been in a little compartment of my mind, this awareness of the open university. And you know how sometimes if you've got a little treat or maybe you've got some money saved and you're saving it for when you really need it, 
That's what my knowledge of the Open University has been for me, knowing that there is an organisation out there whose mission is lifelong learning, who will give you the opportunity to learn at any stage through your adult life. That, that's been really important to me, knowing that, and I think the open in the title is really good as well, really important, feeling that you could go and approach the Open University, you could go and apply, that it is for the likes of me or you or, you know, it's, it's an important thing. And it's been humbling to be here and see so many people who have taken that decision, that have made that step and challenged themselves to prioritise learning. And I know that when I walked into the room today, I, would, I had been thinking, oh, I've been on this stage quite a lot of times. I've played music on here. I'm not nervous. I'm just looking forward to it. And then I came in and I saw all of you sitting there and your families and friends and, and suddenly being part of such a different reason for being here. And I got a, a lump in my throat and I could see some of you as well wiping away a little tear. So I'm really privileged and honoured to be here with all of you, my fellow graduates. <laughs> so, thank you. so it's, a, it's an honour and a privilege to share this day with you and congratulations to you all on your hard work and your success and I wish you all the very best and thank you for awarding me this degree. Vice-Chancellor, we now come to the part of today's ceremony that marks the presentation of graduates who have gained a first degree and have been able to attend here today. The full subjects and classification details are printed in the Directory of Graduates. I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with First Class Honours, Caroline Bubis. Graham Hall. <laughs> Sue Manning. Overton. <laughs> Dorothy Stainsby. Jacqueline Wilford Brown. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours, I present Kathy Aitken.
Sandeep Bassi. Gillian Boyd. <laughs> Sue Bradley. Elaine Bouglas. <laughs> Debbie Charnock Jones. Rebecca Cook. Claire Donnelly. Helen Douglas. <laughs> Anne James. Kirsty Logan. <laughs> Leanne Lyons. Susan Marsden. <laughs> Joanne McAdam. <laughs> Michael McDonald. The North End. <laughs> Jonathan Rosenbrier. <laughs> Jean Ryan. Craig Smith. <laughs> Tracy Stubbs.
Evce Topalova. Marie Vipond. <laughs> Louise Wainwright. Gordon Whiteman. <laughs> Lauren Wilmot. <laughs> Nicola Yu. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts, I present Elizabeth Kellett. Jeff Sutcliffe. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering with honours, I present Daniel, Daniel Benton. Craig Escott. <laughs> Jeff Hudson. <laughs> Andrew Redfern. Andrew Smedley. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Laws with Honours, I present Michael McGowan. Emma Watson. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Science with first class honours, I present Stephen Anderson. <laughs> Paul Bell. <laughs> Linda Brown. <laughs> Nigel.
Nigel Cammer. <laughs> Margaret Daytrick. Andrew Hamnett. <laughs> Philip Hand. David Jones. <laughs> Jane Morris. <laughs> Ian Murdoch. Thelma Omani. <laughs> Craig Pemblington. <laughs> Stephen Robinson. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours, I present Michelle Abela. Sarah Bittleston. <laughs> Drew Brown. Kevin Brown. <laughs> Christopher Burns. <laughs> John Burns. David Campbell. <laughs> Catherine Chapman.
Nicola Clawley. <laughs> Margaret Ann Connor. Thomas Crowder. <laughs> Sheila Fisher. Jackie Garty. Orla Glassy. <laughs> Andrew Graham. <laughs> Barry Greaves. Gemma Hall. <laughs> Denise Holian. <laughs> Gemma Jones. Sean Kerry. <laughs> Shelley Leonard. Stuart Lightfoot. <laughs> Christopher McCabe. Joanne Morrison. <laughs> Sean Morrison. Ian 
Noble. Sandra Norris. Annette Patton. Adrian Place. Claire Pryor. Robinson. <laughs> Gillian Roper. <laughs> Helen Scott. Natalie Smith. <laughs> Julia Strange. Fiona Ward. <laughs> Angie Waring. Weatherston. <laughs> Linda Welsh. <laughs> Joe Worrell. Young. For the degree of Bachelor of Science, I present Emma Appleby.
Katrina Crane. Stephen Darcy. Ian Gibson. Tracy Gilchrist. <laughs> Natasha Granger. <laughs> Diane Langthorne. Bill Oakes. <laughs> Kerry Simpson. <laughs> Susan Walgate. And for the Diploma of Higher Education, I present Helen Scott. Well, thank you everyone for, for coming today to, to this great occasion when we celebrate the achievements of our new graduates. And behind every one of those hands that I've shaken is a story I know of real hard work and determination, often overcoming self-doubt, setbacks, or just the busyness of life that threatened to get in the way of wanting to learn and proving to yourself that you could do it. It's not easy being an OU student often juggling study and deadlines with many other demands. Indeed, some of those with you today may, may well recognise the adage that there's only one thing harder than being an OU student, and that's living with one. Uh, we're all very proud of what you've accomplished. It's your achievements that make our university the great institution that it is. We hope, too, that this is not the end of your journey with us do have a look through the memory stick that you'll find in your ceremony tube. We hope to amaze you again about the community that you can join for life. Among the people that have supported you on your journey to this point are the university's tremendous staff, our advisors, academics, student services staff, including the organizers of these memorable ceremonies, and our associate lecturers. They've all had a stake in helping you to succeed. So let's show our appreciation again to all of those staff, friends and family who've helped you get to this ceremony today. One of our other distinguished honorary graduates, Bill Bryson, once wrote, what other nation in the world could have given us William Shakespeare, Christopher Wren, Windsor Great Park, 
and the Open University. And of course, if Bill had been writing after 2004, I'm sure he'd have added the Sage Gateshead, this fantastic venue that we're in today. There's no doubt that your success owes a huge amount to the staff whose work we've just acknowledged, advising you, teaching you, assessing you, encouraging you, and of course, designing your courses. But it also owes a huge amount to the vision of the pioneers who created the OU back in 1969. Foremost among them was Jenny Lee, to whom Harold Wilson gave the job of setting up the university, and a woman whose own journey from a Scottish mining community to Minister of State has left an indelible mark on what our open university is today. We're a university where what matters is not your social class, your gender, your race, where you live, but wanting to learn. That's what unites us. Not the qualification you came with, but the qualification you worked so hard to leave with. This is what Jenny Lee said in a speech back in 1971. She said, it's a complete fallacy to think of the open university as a working class university, or a middle class university, or a millionaire's university, although there are a few millionaires who could be improved by a course. It's simply something in the flow of our time, simply making the highest level of scholarship over the arts, science and technology available to much larger numbers than ever in the past. So you, our graduates today, have achieved the level of scholarship that Jenny Lee celebrates in, her, in this speech through the courage to know that this is possible. And your university is not just a teaching university, but a research university too. Our research enriches what our students are taught and takes them right to the leading edge of their subjects. And that's also about our innate curiosity as human beings. That's, for example, what motivated our scientists to send one of their instruments on the European Space Agency Rosetta mission to land on a comet five million miles from Earth just last November, searching for the answer to how water formed on our planet. Space research has become one of the OU's signature research areas, pioneered by the late Professor Colin Pillinger. On Desert Island Discs back in 2009, Colin summed up his approach to life in terms that many of you will recognize. There's no such thing as can't. This research also has great economic value, such as new products and services, based on satellite technologies. The huge amount of information now sent back to Earth from space is helping to create new businesses and new jobs, but brings challenges about how to analyze what's called big data and keep it secure. Big data is now everywhere in the digital world. Every time we use a swipe card, mobile phone, click a mouse, visit the doctor, or even drive along the road, we're generating data that somebody else is using. Our computer scientists and mathematicians at the OU are using it to solve problems like how to prevent our cities grinding to a halt with traffic congestion or how we can protect ourselves from the spread of infectious diseases. And our social scientists and philosophers are working on it too, such as how we protect individual rights and privacy. But let me conclude by reflecting on the fact that much is said in these days of fees and loans about the financial return from a university degree, which is significant in terms of future earnings. But less is said about the social return. Graduates are, on average, healthier and happier than non-graduates, and contribute their new confidence and skills in many ways to society. Universities are about our common good, as well as private benefit. And that tradition of common good is something this region knows well symbolized by the embrace of Anthony Gormley's Angel of the North sculpture, that incredible sculpture that isn't just about celebrating the region, but it's about change as well. And among our distinguished honorary graduates as well, Nelson Mandela, he said that education is the greatest weapon we have to change the world. By being here today, you've already changed your lives with an OU degree. Put it to good use and show the world what's remarkable about Open University graduates. Stay part of our community. 
And remember those words on our university shield, live and learn. Thank you. So would all of today's graduates please stand. May I ask all of the guests assembled here today to once again express your warmest congratulations and best wishes to you all. Well done. The proceedings of this degree ceremony have now been completed and I declare this meeting of congregation closed. Would all please stand? <laughs>